breakfast this morning looks incredibly unappetizing, but it actually tastes pretty good. The reason why the milk looks like this is because I added some yogurt to it to make it a bit more creamy. It's also got some flaxseed in there, frozen raspberries, and then these brown chunks are the Prim Primrose's Kitchen Granola that is oat free. Kind of tastes like dish soap, it's got an aftertaste of dish soap, but they're pretty healthy, so I thought I would have this for breakfast along with a cup of tea and then I'm going to drink the rest of this. I don't really drink juices but this one's quite a vegetable heavy juice. It's by Deliciously Ella and I got this yesterday at an event which actually I'll probably, you know what, I'll insert the footage from that event now just so you can have a little look. It was for a skincare brand called Evolve and I didn't really film enough to make a full vlog from it so I may as well insert it now. But yeah that's my breakfast with a cuppa. Good morning everybody. Today I uh, I have the day off work and I thought I would take you along with me because I'm going to this Evolve event in London. It's not really an event, it's just like a breakfast kind of thing. Yeah, I thought it would be interesting to take you with me. You might want to see what goes on. Um, I love Evolve. I've been using this. This is not um, pre-prepared. I have all of my skincare <laughs> out on this shelf, which I, prob sh I probably should keep in the cupboard so that it doesn't, the sun doesn't touch it but I love this daily defense moisture mist by Evolve and actually they are such a nice company I've been a fan of theirs for a while if this focuses you can see yeah, it's made in Hertfordshire in England and this is a really nice um, hyaluronic acid mist some hyaluronic acids I don't really find work that well but this one for some reason if I put it on before my serum it bangs it's really really good what else have I got on this shelf this little inner curse sample this brand sent me it's a new brand called Paradox now I'm not sure if I what I think about this, it's cool because their stuff is packaged in alum aluminium as opposed to plastic, which is great and obviously all their stuff is cruelty free and vegan, but it has al alcohol in it, it has actual Irish whiskey in it, which I don't really know if that's a good thing or not because alcohol is supposed to be drying on the hair, isn't it? Mm, I don't know, I did put some of this on my hair and it was quite heavy so maybe I used too much, but the jury's out with that one. This is a couple of samples, this is a Trilogy very gentle calming serum. I do actually really like this, but the packaging is rubbish. Like, it pumps out way too much at once. It's just, yeah, not the best, but yes, yeah, aimed at sensitive skin and I would agree with that. And then this is a super green serum by Tropic. I have already used this before. This is my second one. And then Old Faithful Pie Rosehip Oil, very nice for scars. This is another newbie to my collection. This is the Strawberry Booster by Bybee. I got this from Naturismo because it was only £12 and most of the kind of serum slash hydrating products are quite expensive. A facial oil from MOA. Um, and then this is a Drunk Elephant proteiny polypeptide cream. Not mad about this. I got a sample of a load of minis and this brand is so expensive and I just don't really think it's worth it. Like this is just a standard cream. It hasn't made much of a difference. It doesn't feel that fancy. Some tweezers and then my Tropic So Sleepy pillow mist. I gave this to my boyfriend to try and he was very impressed. So I think he might buy one for himself. And then over here I've got um, a couple of just foundations that I'm using up. I know you didn't ask, but that is my shelf as it stands. Anyway, <laughs> I've had my breakfast, even though I'm going for breakfast. I was on autopilot and I had a bowl of Rice Krispies. Oh well. Um, but yeah, I'm going to rock and roll and see you in a sec. I thought you might be interested in seeing what's in my bag, slash showing you a little tour of this bag that I really kindly got sent. It's made of vegan leather. This is the brand and it's their Treya bag. It's actually a laptop bag, but you can use it, I suppose, for whatever you want. And I actually love it. I, you may know that I tend to just shop secondhand for bags, but it's hard to find ones that are laptop shaped. And this I have put my laptop in and it carries it really well. But um, yeah, I don't know. I thought I would just show you how it's laid out and what I've got in it to take with me for the day. So this little front pocket, I think is detachable. Yeah, it is. Detachable front pocket here, which has got little poppers. Whoop. And this is so soft, by the way. This is ridiculously soft. And then inside, oh god, it's slippy. It's so soft, it's like slipping everywhere. Inside, it's lined with this really soft fabric. I don't know what it is, but I'll put the details down below. And then I've got some lip products in here. So this is my Pure Papaya Lips. Still loving this. Also, I, need, I know I need to wash my hands. I've just done my makeup. And for some reason, I can't do my makeup without getting makeup all over my hands. But inside opens up like this and it's got two halves so you can tuck like paperwork down there if you want to it's got a little secret pocket in there i'm pretty sure it's protected against like contactless fraud as well i've got my book i'm reading eleanor oliphant is completely fine which i'm quite enjoying i've got some tissues because you know <laughs> little hairbrush we had in the drawer i don't think tresemme is cruelty free i'm sorry guys but we had this in the drawer and I needed a little hairbrush. So I thought instead of buying a brand new one, I'll just use what we've got. But yeah, I'm, I'm not advertising Tresemme as being cruelty free because I'm pretty sure they're not. Sunglasses, a reusable cup 
and then in here I've got my reusable straw oh and then I've got another lip balm I don't need two do I <laughs> and then just some makeup just in case you know so yeah that is the bag there's also a pocket at the back here like little two little sub pockets I would say but very nice very pretty la chambre si noire que mes deux petits yeux n'arrive pas à croire qu'ils sont heureux dis est-ce que le jour Event. It was really nice. I met Livia and also Nicole from Vegan Beauty Girl. I just missed Marta, who, if you don't follow Marta Kanga, we were we just missed each other. I arrived as she left because she's an early bird and I'm a late bloomer. I thought I would show you the mask because I just used this that they're kind of promoting. It's their new launch. I'll insert some chat if I can with Laura, who is the founder of the brand. I've only tried it once, so I can't vouch for it, but it's basically a mask that's supposed to exfoliate as well but the exfoliating particles in it like the exfoliating scrubbies are made from blueberries that would otherwise be thrown away so like from the food industry that would otherwise just get discarded is it out already or is so it the already? mask is out already and we're changing the particles in about a month we just have a big tub of the coconut ones left to use up literally like that and then we'll be moving to the blueberries ready yeah go for it so it starts milking straight away you can then start exfoliating with it and it sort of turns into this sort of chocolate milky type texture but you can feel the particles are quite gentle this feels really nice <laughs> that's such a good idea it's like are you thinking of doing that uh, in terms of using the upcycled yeah, it's one particles? of the first ingredients that we found that's upcycled like that but it's starting to be a trend in the ingredients in this time. and we're looking at an upcycled charcoal now as well to do another mask probably for our other range so we're starting to see it and as we see them we'll try and incorporate them into products i know that blueberries are supposed to be re a really good I don't really see them too often in skincare, but I know eating them is a good... They're very high in antioxidants, so I hear. It's also got raw cacao in it. It smells like brownie mix when you put it on your face. It's really lovely. So yeah, that's the info on that if you want to pause and have a little read. Also in this bag was a little hyaluronic serum, which I tried and it's so nice. It's really slimy, but in the best way. I have high hopes for that because I love their moisture mist, their daily defense moisture mist, which is high in hyaluronic acid. And then this is their daily renew facial cream. Again, I've tried this before and like it. Also gave us a few kind of juices in this because it was at Deliciously Ella's Deli. They yeah gave us one of her nut butter balls. I haven't actually tried these. I've tried the energy balls, but I think these are newer ones. And then I did go into M&S and picked up a perfume which was marked as vegan on the website, Mimosa and Bergamot. And then they gave me this, this just little test of like discovery set, free sort of gift with purchase, Sleeping Bunny certified, M&S own brand. Good stuff. For lunch, I'm creating a random sort of creamy olive tapenade. I use tahini and hummus, lemon juice, obviously olives with some herbs and a bit of salt and pepper. And I'm having that with some lentil pasta and some leftover soup from last night. This is some leek soup that my mum made and it looks disgusting. It looks revolting in fact, but it tasted really, really good. Pasta and soup is a really underrated combination. I highly recommend trying it if you haven't tried it thus far. I also am having a snack. This is some leftover, again, juice from the event yesterday. This is the black lemonade water by the brand Sea Press, and I had it with this snack from back in the day. This is banana, date, peanut butter, and cacao. This is a combination I used to have all the time, and it, it never lets me down. And then for tea, I am making some lentil dal. So I'll leave the re any recipes that I've used, I'll link down below, but I have kind of adapted some of them. I took some ginger powder, and some garlic powder and some cumin. Obviously I'll list all the spices down below. I chopped up some onion as well, fried that in a bit of olive oil and then after about five to seven minutes, I added some garlic as well. So this is me peeling the garlic. One of my least favorite jobs, it takes so long. The reason why you add it a bit later than the onion is so that it doesn't go all bitter and it tastes better. And I also added some turmeric as well, about a half teaspoon of turmeric into the onions that were frying and mix that all together. I added a bit of water, I think, because it was starting to get a bit dry, and also some nutritional yeast. So this is mainly for health reasons than taste reasons, but it adds a little bit of a nutty flavor. And then I rinsed the lentils and got my hands dirty, <laughs> rinsing them all off. Okay, so I've just transferred it to the slow cooker, and I'm going to add the red lentils. I always find that with this recipe, the lentils just don't cook. 
So I'm really hoping that using the slow cooker is going to make them cook all the way through so they're not hard at all. And then I'm going to add the stock. It's going to go everywhere. <laughs> Uh oh, I'll clear that up here in a second. Don't worry, Lisa. Oh, and then tomatoes. I don't have the coconut milk for this recipe, so I'm just going to do it with tomatoes instead. I'm going to also add a bay leaf and lemon juice. Oh, just let the seeds go in, they add extra flavour. And then, since I don't have coconut milk, I thought I'd put a bit of almond milk in. If I can open this one handed, just give it a bit of creaminess. Cool, I think I'm going to put that on high until it's bubbling and then put it down to low. It doesn't look very full. Et voila, dinner is served. So this dal tastes amazing. It probably would be nicer with the coconut milk in it, but I didn't have coconut milk. The lentils need to be cooked a bit longer. So I've cooked them for about four hours, but I reckon like six to seven hours, they'd be soft all the way through, but I'm hungry and I want to eat now. Um, and then I've got some down here. This is quinoa with bulgur wheat. It's so easy to cook. It's really fluffy and it's not as heavy as rice, I find. I think it's got higher protein content as well, if you're into that kind of thing. This is actually quite a protein heavy meal because we've got peas over there, which are a good source of plant protein. And then over here, this is just some of that creamy sauce I made earlier with the olives in, kind of like a creamy tapenade style thing. And yeah, that is my dinner. I've made some fruit infused water with some orange, rosemary, mint and cucumber. Grated some cucumber into it and some ice. 